My name is Attorney Barton Morris of the Law Office of Barton Morris. I can be reached at michigancriminalattorney.com uh, or I can be emailed at barton at bartonmorris.com. This video is about why blood tests for the presence of marijuana are not that helpful and relevant in prosecutions for driving under the influence of marijuana. When there has been an arrest, when somebody's been arrested for driving under the influence of marijuana, there's always gonna be a blood test. There's no uh, evidential test that's available, like a breath test for an alcohol uh, case, that can be done immediately. So there's always gonna be a blood draw. Uh, now the police are generally gonna ask for permission or consent for that blood draw, and if they don't get it, they're gonna get a warrant for the blood draw. But either way, uh, the blood draw and the blood analysis is the only way to determine whether uh, somebody has marijuana in their system. The question is, what does that really mean? So when the blood test comes back and there's marijuana in somebody's blood uh, and there's a concentration that's identified like five nanograms per milliliter, does that really mean that somebody was intoxicated by that marijuana? And the answer to that question unequivocally is no. The amount or concentration of THC in somebody's body, active THC, uh, cannot be reliably used to make a determination that somebody is intoxicated. Putting this another way, uh, it should be understood that THC and marijuana acts differently in our bodies uh, differently than like alcohol. Alcohol uh, is hydrophilic, means it is absorbed in water and it is eliminated at a, at a constant uh, rate. So when, uh, so when we drink more uh, and the increase of alcohol comes in our body, there is gonna be more of an impairment. At the, and consequently, when there is an elimination of alcohol from our body, there's gonna be less impairment. That is a direct correlation that can be uh, done with alcohol in every circumstance. With marijuana, absolutely not the case. Just because there is more THC in somebody's body does not mean there is a higher degree of impairment. One of the reasons is, is that marijuana, instead of being hydrophilic, it's lipophilic. What that means is, is that it's attracted to the fat in our body as opposed to water. And when the THC is going into our fat, into our body, it is eliminated from our body or from those fat stores at an irregular uh, rate. It is not at a regular rate uh, like alcohol. And therefore, THC can be released into the bloodstream at irreg irregular levels and in a manner that doesn't have anything to do with somebody's psychomotor impairment. So this is one reason. The second reason that THC concentrations cannot be uh, identified towards impairment is the fact that there's a lot of different people that have a different tolerance to marijuana. Chronic users of marijuana are going to first of all, have much more tolerance, meaning that they can consume the same amount of marijuana that somebody that is a naive user and be much, much, much less intoxicated or impaired. In fact, it is true that some people, uh, because they, are, they, they chronically use marijuana so often, they can consume marijuana and still drive safely. Uh, it's certainly not something that I recommend. It is certainly uh, not something that people should do, but it is true that some people are so tolerant to the effects of marijuana and specific strains, uh, particularly that their driving is simply just not impaired. Uh, therefore, their THC levels in their body, um, they do not equate to, equate to impairment. Therefore, people that are more tolerant, chronic users of marijuana are going to have higher amounts of THC in their bodies and it does not equate to their ability to drive a car or their inability to drive a car. So tolerance has a significant impact and police don't do anything to judge the tolerance of an individual. They don't ever ask questions, well, how often do you use marijuana? Do you use it every day? How many times did you use it today? How many times have you used it in the past 30 days? These are all um, things that are completely relevant that need to be determined before anybody can use a concentration of THC in somebody's blood before they make a, a determination as to whether they're intoxicated or impaired. It's another reason why these blood tests should not be used and are really irrelevant. One of the last reasons I'm gonna talk about uh, for the reason why THC concentration in somebody's blood shouldn't be used is because we don't know the route of administration. Unlike alcohol, alcohol only has one route of administration. It's go, it goes through your mouth and into your stomach. That's it. 
Uh, it could be beer, wine, uh, liquor. Uh, the, amount, the type of alcohol can differ, obviously, but the manner of which that we consume it is the same. THC is, is different, as many people know, and a lot of people like to, of course, consume it through inhalation, and it can, be, it can be consumed through inhalation through a joint, a pipe, a bong, or even using vapor. And all of these different ways will be introduced different, differently to the body. But it can also be eaten. It can be consumed orally, not through our lungs, but through our stomach. And when it is consumed orally, the the pharmacological effects and the psychodynamics of, uh, and, and psychokinetics of the drug completely behave differently in our bodies. When uh, we eat marijuana, many people will understand that the pharmacological effects uh, take a little bit longer. It, take, it, take, it can take 45 minutes to an hour before they begin feeling high. Well, the uh, concentration of THC uh, is going to be longer as well. And the elimination of THC is going to be different. Uh, as I had said, it is, uh, a, a, it is a drug that is stored in our fat and it's eliminated at irregular results. And that happens regardless of whether we're eating it or we're smoking it. But when smoking it, the THC rises very quickly in our blood and then falls. Uh, at an irregular rate. It can, be, it can be completely different for different people. But without understanding the route of administration, nobody can really understand the value of a blood test with a concentration uh, of marijuana. So the bottom line here is this. There's all of these prosecutions that are happening in the state of Michigan for driving under the influence of marijuana. Uh, police officers aren't even conducting these, these uh, investigations properly, properly using alcohol investigation techniques as opposed to ones where that are specifically designed for the ingestion of marijuana. So they're not even investigating them properly. And then they're making these arrests, oftentimes unjustified, simply because they may have smelled marijuana. And then they're getting people's blood, subject, subjecting them to blood tests. Uh, and then getting a blood test result, which be, could mean absolutely nothing. Uh, I think that there really needs to be a, a complete uh, reevaluation as to the admissibility of these tests. Uh, when somebody gets a result back and it says 10 nanograms uh, of uh, THC per uh, 100 milliliters of blood, uh, without more, it's really uh, meaningless. Uh, it doesn't mean that much. Actually, there's one other thing I'd like to point out too. You know when. The, the same laboratory tests these, uh, that does these tests, it's the Michigan State Police Forensic uh, Science uh, Laboratory, they have a significantly high uh, measurement uncertainty rate. So, when, so what we're talking about is kind of like an error rate. For, for um, at this, no measurement there is exact, no measurement is precise, every measurement has um, a, a measurement of uncertainty. For alcohol, it's less than 10%. So every alcohol test that comes back uh, plus or minus 10% uh, it's going to be within the range of accuracy. But for THC, the unmeasurement of certainty in, uh, the, in this particular laboratory is closer to 30%. So when we get a result back that says 10 nanograms, it could be as low as 7 or as high as 13, uh, the, the actual result. We don't even really know, like the, this laboratory doesn't even do, uh, uh, take the precautions necessary to ensure a smaller margin of error. Uh, again, it's because it doesn't really matter. They don't really understand or they don't really care about it because the fact is, is that we just don't know what it means as far as somebody's impairment or intoxication. Basically, it's a test that says somebody has marijuana or THC in their body. Well, oftentimes the driver admits that already. So that doesn't really, provide a lot and giving it to a jury uh, without any further explanation uh, I think is, uh, is a big mistake and defense lawyers shouldn't permit it to happen. So uh, I think this is a very important topic. Uh, uh, anybody that's prosecuted for driving under the influence of marijuana should understand and make sure that their, their attorneys understand the significance or the insignificance of these blood tests and I can be reached at any time with any of these questions at um, michigancriminalattorney.com or at my email, barton at bartonmorris.com. Thank you.